Hey guys, before we start today's review, I want to introduce you to a character I made. This is Charlotte Strong. She was created back in high school, and I had the help of a close friend who has sadly passed away. Now, I am the only one who will be able to flesh this character out and see what she can be used for. Why am I talking about an anthropomorphic wolf when I could add that into the Alpha and Omega reviews? Well, after when Bob Show posted a video telling anybody who is interested in it about the next thing they have to review. That movie in question is Cool Cat Saves the Kids. Yes, I am aware that many people have reviewed this before me, and many more will be on the way. Not to mention the bad history that occurred back in 2015, where the creator Derek Savage has attacked various YouTubers like I Hate Everything, Bob Show, and many more. And it's about as childish as all the diehard Spyro the Dragon fans who were bitching and whining about Skylanders. Yes, I can feel them raging as we speak. Though, I don't think he will do this to anyone else, I hope. But for now, let's take a look before this video gets taken down. Now, before I go any further, I won't be going and doing the review like I did last time. I have something very special to do. Yes, it's me, Arthur Martin, in his human form, the snarky critic, here to go do various visual humor. <laughs> yes, I am aware I made a video a while ago where I said I won't be showing my face. But I wanted to do this just for no other reason than to do various visual humor. Anyways, Cool Cat Save the Kids is a rather interesting piece. While I do prefer reviewing animated films, I don't see any harm reviewing live action works. The film starts off with a few problems. You'll notice right off the bat that the cinematography seems alright, minus the movement of the camera where it should stay still as the camera pans through the neighborhood. Because this is a whole lot more better when you could have had something that could have made the movie look less jerky. We move inside a house where we see the main protagonist, Cool Cat. Now I'm pretty sure people will be making thousands of furry jokes, but I think Derek made Cool Cat as a mascot of sort, like various anti-bullying, drug, etc. Though the voice could have been done better. And I love you too! And I'm Cool Cat, and I love all kids! If you made him a calm and cool voice, and he would be above doing things like doing drugs, stealing, bullying, then maybe it would be interesting. We see a little girl skipping down the street to visit Cool Cat. Then we see the creator of the film, Daddy Derek, who apparently is the father of Cool Cat. I have several questions. I do too. How come Cool Cat is a six foot bipedal talking cat while his father is a human? You could make an argument that maybe he was adopted at when he was a kitten. But if you've seen the movie completely, you'll see that his mother is an anthropomorphic cat as well. Now, I don't really want to hear this whole Daddy Derek had sex with a cat thing, because that's just wrong. Even for a fandom of people who make their personas as anthropomorphic animals, yes, I am sure that there are people in that fandom that would find drawing anthro animals having sex rather gross. And yes, this is coming from a man who made this. Anyways, while Cool Cat and his friend Maria are out preparing for a school election, we meet the antagonist, Butch the Bully. Now, reviewers like Bob Show and I Hate Everything have already talked about this character before. Anyways, Butch plans on ruining Cool Cat and Maria's good time by texting mean comments through his phone. Here is where we meet the first snag. Cool Cat should tell Maria to not listen or answer anything from anyone you don't know. Maybe go tell their parents about the problem so things could be taken care of more easily. In this case, he doesn't do that. Instead, he tells them to go and read the comments and answer the phone. Then he says that they might feel bad about what they said and want to apologize for what they did, making things even more confusing. I love you for that. Thanks, Maria. And I love you too. And I'm Cool Cat, and I love 
all kids. <laughs> I might be a six foot bipedal talking cat on the outside, but on the inside I'm a cold hearted serial killer that lures children to my van where I can do naughty things to them. When Butch tries to call a cool cat and insult him, he doesn't see a blonde haired 12 year old on a cell phone, which makes it worse than what Cool Cat says during the event. When that doesn't work, Butch then goes and gets two kids to spray paint a wall after he gets some paint in his eyes, leading up to something rather silly. And it's not cool to paint on someone's wall! This is one of the film's greatest downfalls. The voice acting is exceedingly bad. Sometimes people would talk in a rather disjointed fashion, like the scene where Mrs. Cat is on the phone. Someone is calling. Hello, this is the cat residence. Hi, Sammy. I'll tell I'll tell him right now. The scene where Cool Cat says it's not okay to paint on somebody's wall, and of course, Cool Cat's atrocious puppetry when it comes to his lip movement, because this is how people talk in real life. Now, Bob Show did show some fixes that could have been done in the editing process, but even that, editing the movie itself, won't save this project. Sometimes you'll see people in the background, the audio being hard to hear, and lines being done in a rather horrible way. Even I try to make my videos look great, and I end up fucking up the continuity because I'm wearing a different shirt each take. So we then see Cool Cat trying to talk to the two kids Butch brought with him. Leading up to a rather bizarre scene. But they know we were there. Nobody cares for us. That's why we do it. Oh no, you got it wrong! That's not the truth! The truth is, there's a lot of people that love you and care for you. I know because I love you. I'm Cool Kid and I love all kids. Thank you for caring about us. You know what? I have a saying. Also, you could see that there is somebody in the background that goes out of his house and then gets back in. Smart move, he's the best character in this film. I can only assume that Derek didn't notice since it was really far away for him to see somebody in there. So, I'm sure it's fine for people like me. I mean, it's not like there's people in the background that's gonna be there and me not noticing one little bit. After when Cool Cat reads a mean comment, he then loses it. I'm a bully and I'm gonna get you tomorrow? Oh no! And falls asleep. Then we see another major problem in the movie. The effects at times can be alright, but other times they can be just terrible. In the beginning, you see Comic Sans in the intro, visuals like the morning and night scene being reversed, and finally this scene, where Cool Cat enters Dreamland. Such a here is where we see about what Cool Cat thinks about what he should do to stop bullying. So, I'm gonna learn to stand up for myself. Yes, that's a great way to stop bullying. Stand up for yourselves. Okay, you're going to stand up for yourself and then what? Bullies won't stop bullying you just because you're not running away. Sometimes bullies can be rather dangerous, carrying weapons like knives, and sometimes even guns. The best way to stop bullying is to either ignore it or tell an adult to help out with the problem. The next day, Cool Cat prepares for the new day, brushing invisible teeth, washing his face, and having breakfast. Derek then drives him to Hollywood, where I think he gets a call from a parade going on? Here is where Cat butchers various names of various cars that would be something kids would like. We got the Batmobiles! Here's the Jurassic Park vehicle! Here's Herbie the Love Bug! And I love you! Ooh, look! It's the Knight Rider car! Oh, wow! Here's the Starsky and Hutch car! Good golly! Here's the red Ferrari from Magnum P.I. Vroom! Vroom! There's no ghost here! And that's because the Ghostbusters car is here! Isn't the Smokey and the Bandit car pretty? Some say that Derek wrote down the ones he liked, but I don't know. We then get to see the parade. Here is where we see the scene, and yet another problem appears. 
The leg parts of Cool Cat's costume are starting to fall down. Not really a major problem like this scene. Cool Cat, the coolest cat in town. Cool Cat is the creation of Hollywood's very own Derek Savage. This this scene kind of brings up some problems. Is Cool Cat a fictional character? A Frankenstein's monster? Or is he supposed to be a living person? Scenes like this just makes the movie seem even more confusing than it already is. The next day, Cool Cat teaches a kid to look both ways before crossing the street, after he drops a toy, which gets confusing when he does it and not look both ways before he crossing, like he said moments ago. After that scene, Cool Cat and his friends then go on a treasure hunt, to which they stumble upon a gun lying in someone's yard. They then think about what they should do and then leave it there. Then for some reason, Butch is out of police's arms. By the way, Butch was arrested after when he stole candy from a baby. I have no idea why. Anyway, Butch then decides to go and use it to get everybody's lunch money at school. It's going to be that time for me. <laughs> yeah, I find that hard to believe, kid. Then we see another stupid scene. Hey, wait a minute. Isn't that being a tattletale? I don't want to be a snitch. They worry about being a snitch instead of thinking of the very well-being and safety of others. That... It's just stupid. Something like this makes me even more angry, due to the stupidity of worrying about being a snitch. Look, I'm trying to stay calm right now, but things like this just piss me off. Something so stupid and simple holds much weight that they are worried about being a snitch instead of caring about the safety of others, especially since this is being done in real life. Countless school shootings across the world are occurring, and some people might even know about that. If people like these are just gonna let it happen or worry about being a snitch, just fucking pisses me off. You know that somebody has a gun, you know it's gonna be used for something bad, and you know it's not gonna be a good thing. But you let something so simple and stupid hold much weight that you're just letting it happen. So they try to justify her actions, because reasons and potatoes, and they go to Derek, who then goes and calls Butch's parents. Then they head off to school the next day. Wait, what? After more of Cool Cat doing absolutely nothing, the police arrest the bullies? What a twist! So the day is saved because reasons of potatoes, and Cool Cat is considered a hero. Alright guys, get a pen and paper out, because I'm going to be listing all the problems in this movie. First off, the movie is called Cool Cat Saves the Kids, and in the movie, he doesn't do jack shit. They also say that Cool Cat is cool, but just comes off making Bubsy look good. Personally, I would go with Bubsy than Cool Cat anyway, but let's talk about that for another time. There was no character arcs for anyone, and they didn't seem to have much of a moral that would help stop bullying. All of that, with characters that don't feel like real people, done by people who look and sound like they don't give a shit, this movie is just garbage. Now, I know that Daddy Derek had good intentions when he made this film, but the way he did it makes Where the Dead Go to Die look like a masterpiece. Yeah, say what you want about Where the Dead Go to Die. At least that was made with more competence rather than somebody who barely understood anything about bullying. The Alpha and Omega franchise was something I was able to take care of because it didn't have too many complicated subjects. Or, at the very least, having stuff that manages to irk me in more ways than one. The characters were horrendous. The animation was lazy. The stories were bare-boned. That's really all I can say about that franchise, because believe me, it's just that bad. But this movie is a whole different story for me to tackle. It makes you guys wonder, just what kind of person was driving behind the wheel of this film? Oh wait, I know who. We had a film director who did everything for this movie, and after seeing a bunch of critiques on this movie, went on a copyright rampage, attacking people like Bob Show, I Hate Everything, and I'm pretty sure many more after this. 
the characters are all one-dimensional, the editing is atrocious, but the one thing that's going to make me want to hurt myself after reviewing this is just how poorly they've done the anti-bullying message. Yes, bullying is a serious topic that really needs to be put to rest, but the way the movie handled bullying made it seem like Derek had no idea how to stop bullying, or even anything about bullying. Alright, I have rambled a lot about the story, so what about the characters and the humor? Well, the humor is non-existent. Half of the time, I was kind of bursting out laughing when I saw various scenes that were unintentionally funny. As for the characters, they all seem pretty one-dimensional and very generic. We have the main hero, the hero's friend, the hero's father and mother, the antagonist, the pitiful lackey, and that's about it. The movie is pretty much the equivalent of somebody who thinks they know everything about anti-bullying, but just comes out looking like a total fraud. This movie does have potential, but the execution of it killed any and all potential for the film being good. And it makes it even worse when Daddy Derek went on a copyright rampage and attacked various YouTubers who only critiqued the movie in an honest fashion. It's just how things are, Derek. You can't stop anybody from having a different opinion than yours. And no amount of bullying, death threats, or any of that stuff is gonna stop me from having my honest opinion of it too. It fails to be educational, it fails to help stop bullying, it fails as a movie, and it's a failure enough to earn Arthur's seal of disapproval. If you still are a fan of this movie, then good for you. It's just me giving my opinion of things. Now, before I finish this review, I want to say that I won't be doing this anymore. I'd rather take time on my reviews so I won't worry about it a lot, and my reviews won't feel unfinished in some way. And with that being said, I'm off to go and relax and prepare for my next review. If you like what you saw, then leave a comment and maybe even subscribe to see more of these reviews. If there is something you want me to review, then please let me know in the comments.